Hey, what's up YouTube? It's been a while. I've been super busy working on a massive Blender add-on along with extensive documentation and example content. It's completely free and open source, links are in the video description below. In this video, I'll give you a quick introduction and a highlight what it's capable of in a short and concise way. More videos are coming soon, including quick start guides and more. First off, the Game Tools add-on includes several methods for generating what's broadly referred to as vertex animation textures. That term, however, is quite generic and doesn't fully capture the variety of ways animation can be baked into textures. The most common technique is in fact literally called vertex animation textures. The concept is simple. For each vertex and for each frame, you encode vertex offset and normal into two separate textures. Then, using a custom UV map, you sample those textures and reapply the vertex offset, allowing you to play back the animation in any game engine using a simple vertex shader. While Blender already had a few add-ons for baking these maps, this one was built with customization and user experience as core priorities. To my knowledge, it offers several features that most other add-ons lack. You can bake mesh sequences, bake animations using NLA tracks, or bake over a specific frame range. It supports multiple objects, of course, and gives you fine control over texture layout, texture resolution, sampling methods in the shader, and much more. You can also remap the baked data for use in 8-bit RGBA textures if you're okay with some precision loss. On top of that, the tool generates a detailed report with all sorts of useful information. This report is also exported as an XML file, making it easy to create custom importers for your game engine or application. That way, textures and meshes could be automatically imported and set up. Speaking of export, everything can be exported with fully customizable paths and file names. So essentially, everything is done with a single click of a button. The game tool add-ons also comes with an incredibly detailed wiki. Over 150 pages packed with hundreds of images. It's not just documentation for the tool though. It's also a valuable resource for technical artists packed with theoretical insights. Also, the content examples provide plenty of practical demonstrations on how to use the generated files, textures, meshes and more. This tool, however, is not limited to Unreal Engine. It can be configured to work with virtually any game engine or application. Oh, and presets are now a thing. Now, encoding data per vertex per frame comes with its pros and cons. The upside? It can bake any kind of animation. Clothes, themes, morph targets, keyframes, armatures, you name it. Since it works on a per vertex basis, it's completely agnostic to how the animation was originally created. It's also very simple and cheap to recreate the animation in the vertex shader. The downside? Well, it usually results in large and heavy textures. Another technique for picking animation textures assumes that the motion happens at the object level, what I call object animation textures. In this case, vertices are assumed to remain static and only the object's transforms are picked. While this method isn't as versatile as vertex animation textures, it can sometimes be a better alternative, especially since it typically results in extremely small textures. The vertex shader is slightly more complex as it involves a few extra steps to reconstruct the animation, but it's still a very lightweight approach. It's ideal for baking things like rigid body simulations or keyframed object animations. For more information, the wiki goes into much more detail on this technique. And again, the content examples include plenty of practical use cases. The tool is highly customizable and can be configured in a wide variety of ways to suit your workflow. Another technique for picking animation textures is to encode the skinning data of an armature to recreate a skeletal animation. This method is a bit more involved, and to my knowledge, no other Blender add-on currently supports it. 
It's an excellent way to encode skeletal animation and is often preferred over traditional vertex animation textures as long as you stay within its constraints. Namely, well, that it's limited to skeletal animation. The vertex shader is a bit more complex and computationally heavier compared to traditional V80s, but it's still very efficient overall. This approach is still, to this day, the go-to solution for rendering crowds or large numbers of animated characters and has been shipped in many, many AAA games. It also integrates well with systems like Niagara as shown in one of the examples. Which brings me to this. Even if you're not interested in using any of these tools, the content examples might still be worth exploring as a technical resource. They include advanced use cases, like creating a custom state machine in Niagara, for example, that could be valuable for anyone looking to dive deeper into animation systems or shader workflows. And once more, the wiki dives deep into the inner workings of the algorithm, explaining in great detail how to reapply the rigging data and play back the skeletal animation in the vertex shader. This might not sound familiar at first, mainly because I came up with the name myself, but if I mention Pivot Painter, you probably know what I'm referring to. There are already some Blender add-ons that replicate the original Pivot Painter script from 3ds Max, and I initially set out to do a simple port. But after digging deeper into the algorithm and the baking process, I realized there was a lot of room for improvement. So I expanded on it, added more options, and opened the door to entirely new workflows. All of this is, once again, thoroughly explained in the wiki. Pivot Painter has never been easier to use. The baking process has been reworked, and material functions have been rebuilt from the ground up to deliver a much smoother and more intuitive experience. There are also new potential optimizations thanks to a redesigned method for baking hierarchy data. Plus, the infamous Pivot Painter bitpacking algorithm can be disabled for a cheaper unpacking process if your use case allows it. Very cool, in my opinion. The game tool add-ons also include the long-awaited updated version of my Data Baker add-on, originally released a couple of years ago. It's been completely reworked from the ground up and now offers even more control and flexibility for baking all kinds of arbitrary data into UVs, vertex colors, and even normals. It also features a new bitpacking algorithm that allows for even greater precision. This tool is perfect for baking pivots into UVs, gradients into vertex color, morph targets, and so much more. The sky's the limit. As always, the wiki provides an in-depth overview of everything the tool can do. And the content examples include plenty of demonstrations to help you get started. The last tool included in the Game Tools add-on is Assigned Distance Field Baker. It's a bit more niche, but it can be useful for a wide range of applications. The wiki provides more detailed information, and the content examples showcase practical use cases. Voila, 5 months worth of work packed into this add-on, pretty much. Again, it's free and open source, links are in the video description below. This was only possible thanks to my amazing Patreon supporters, so a huge thanks to all of you who made this happen. I truly hope you find the add-on useful, and that it helps nudge Blender towards broader adoption in game studios, even if just a little. For those not using Blender, well, I still recommend checking out the wiki. It's truly packed with information, and I'm confident it offers some of the best insights available anywhere on the internet into the various techniques covered in this video. I'll be making follow-up videos to create quick start guides and so on soon. In the meantime, the wiki should have everything you need. If not, feel free to reach out. I'll do my best to help. And if you encounter any bugs or issues, please open a ticket on GitHub, or contact me on Patreon, Discord, or any of my socials. That's it for today's video, short and sweet. And apologize for disappearing for 6 months, but it had to be done. Alright, I'll see you in the next video, thanks for watching, take care. Bye-bye!